Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi. You can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, it's Ken Calvert alongside my dear friend and buddy old pal of mine, Father Joe Grimaldi, and we would like to welcome you to the Father Joe Grimaldi Podcast. The Lincoln Spring Sales event is going on now at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln. Shop online at StarLincoln.com and take a virtual tour of their incredible 2021 lineup. The Aviator, the all-new Corsair, the Nautilus, the impressive Navigator. Want a sedan? Well, now's the time to make an incredible deal on the remaining 2020 Lincoln MKZs. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln celebrating 50 years as the area's premier Lincoln dealer with service second to none from an oil change to a major repair looking for a previously owned Lincoln. My friends look no further than Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln. Call Star Lincoln 248-354-4900 for sales or service. Father Joe Grimaldi and I are both driving a Star Lincoln because not unlike you, we receive the Star treatment. Simply head to StarLincoln.com or call 248-354-4900. I was thinking about all of the various venues that are reopening, and it's it's great. I mean, it's good to hear that very soon Comerica Park, our our baseball park here in Detroit, will be allowed to have a full audience, full capacity. Yeah, restaurants back to let's open her up if you can find the help. Of course, that's the big issue. That's a big issue. Maybe just maybe we did it. We've gotten through this. The new normal, and it will be a new normal, is here. We'll have to wait and see if we need another booster shot down the road and all that. That aside, I wrote this down earlier today. Attending Mass on Sunday. Obligation, habit, or passion? Well, when we speak about obligation, the Archbishop has lifted the dispensation, which means now... If you are Catholic and of age, you are obliged to attend Mass on Sunday in person. Now, if you are beyond 65, which today is not so old, if you are beyond 65, if you are in any way compromised, if you're weakening, if you have a difficult time walking and maneuvering into pews and things of this sort, you're certainly asked to stay at home and to participate via the internet, if you want, to attend Mass in that way. So the dispensation may be lifted, but by the same token, I think he's made it a lot easier by stating, particularly an age group, that, you know, you don't have to. Well, that's all people need to hear sometimes, and they're just not going to. However, I don't know if that's the main reason why the numbers dropped, and I think they have dropped quite a bit. I don't think that's the main reason. When I look at the church, at least the one where I participate, they still have one of the pews empty. In other words, the every other pew is empty. Okay. And so that people have distancing to an extent. However, they've lifted the distancing rule for going up to communion. They've lifted the mask rule so that there is a section where people can go without a mask or a section with a mask and so on. So people can still attend, but I don't think we have full capacity the reason I want to say that and stress it is because every other pew was empty. That was not the case before the pandemic. Right. And so the church seems to be full, but is it full in the sense of the real capacity of the church? When you look at the past, of course, we didn't have that empty pew. So, you know, you speak about obligation. The obligation is still there to attend Mass if you can, and not to feel guilty if you can't. So if you're not feeling well or sick or whatever the case might be, you should stay at home. Okay, you mentioned passion. That's very important. 
regardless of obligation, because even with the obligation, we should attend Mass because we want to. If you don't, it becomes, oh, almost like watching TV or going to a golf tournament and talking to your friends instead of watching what's going on. Right. I think in order for us to really participate in Mass, we have to put ourselves into it. And what I mean by that is that, for example, when we offer bread and wine as the earthly gifts that then become sanctified and consecrated, we have to offer our own struggles in life along with it. In other words, we have to become participants so that even our struggles then become a gift to Almighty God, especially when they're consecrated along with the bread and wine. And so I don't know how many people truly think about that when they are at Mass, but to think that you're going to just be an observer is not a good thing, okay? So when we speak about passion, at least intention might be a better word, I don't know, but the intention of really wanting to be there and participating as fully as you can. So if we're not doing that, there's something wrong. I think those who are attending now, because even though the obligation's been lifted, a lot of people still aren't going. Mm -hmm. And so that those who are there, though I think are more serious about it and seem to be more participants than observers. I think there's a big difference between the participant and an observer. Okay, so you mentioned obligation, passion, and habit. Yeah, there's no question. You know, in the morning, when you have your breakfast, you probably sit in the same spot around either the kitchen table or the dining room table. Mm -hmm. We're creatures of habit. When we go to church, oh, you could probably guess where you're going to sit by where you sat last time. <laughs> it's almost the second pew to the right and so yeah, on and right. so forth. They're not going to move. That's yeah. the place where you go. And God forbid yeah. you take somebody else's place. <laughs> you know, It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, basically, we're all creatures of habit. We yeah. do things a certain way. Uh, for example, if you read the newspaper in the morning, you read it in a special spot. Right. We all have our special spot. Uh, so we are creatures of habit. Going to Mass is partly a habit, a good habit. But I think we need to become more participants along with being in the habit of going. In other words, we should go. Yeah, out of habit is not the worst thing in the world. As long as we could put the intention in there, as long as we could put what you call the passion in there, mm -hmm, yeah. I think it's something good. Yep. Uh, because whether we like it or not, we're all creatures of habit. It's like anything else, and I like to tell people this. Take, for example, someone who's used to exercising, and they exercise every morning. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, something happens, and they're away from the exercise for one, two, three, a month, a month, two months, and so on. It is the hardest thing in the world to get back to that exercise because we are creatures of habit. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that once you start going back to what you were doing in the exercise, then it's natural for you to do it the next day, the next day, or the next week, whichever way you time it. And I think the same is true at Mass. If you're used to going on a regular basis, well, I mean, you keep on doing it. If you don't, well, it's so easy to stay away because you haven't done it last week or this week. So I think it's important that we keep to our routine as much as possible. You took the words right out of my mouth because last week, because I went back to do morning radio, I was filling in, and... You know, when you get up that early in the morning, it disrupts your entire week. By doing that morning show and getting up so early, 
I was going to have to put the gym out of the way for about 10 days. And I, you know, I did the entire week without doing physical therapy and using the equipment and doing all of those things. And it was so easy to get used to not doing that. And then all of a sudden you've got to go, nope, it's time to get back in the gym. It's time to get back to work. You feel better, you know, it's healthier, and it's just the right thing to do. So that sort of a habit is, 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 a, is like you said, it's a good habit. It's a good habit. And, I'm, and now I'm back into that rotation. But either way, I feel much better. I feel much, much better getting up knowing I have to be at the gym at 10 a.m. to be with the person that's going to work me out. And when I get out of there, I feel like a million bucks. And that's the way I've always approached Mass, okay? It can be a little bit like, oh, that's right, i got to get up at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, you know, and you know, look halfway decent. And But then you come out of the church and you feel a bit of exhilaration. You say to yourself, what a great way to start my Sunday. But if you stop doing it for any length of time, it's difficult to get back to it. It's just like the exercise. You stop it, yep. and then it's not easy to get back. I, and I think this is why good habits are good habits. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. You are, yeah. you are right on. You did say a funny thing at the very beginning, and we didn't put it on the podcast yet. We're going to do it right now. <laughs> and you were saying you were looking out at the audience on one half, on one side, no masks. Right. On the other side, uh, everybody was wearing a mask. Right. And it's going to take some time for us all to work through that. It's interesting now to go into a grocery store and see people without a mask. Yeah. You know, but I'm one of those guys that still wears a mask. Nothing wrong with that. I have had both shots. I'm well past the, you know, 30 days or whatever. I feel fine, but... I don't know what it is. Right now, I feel like I need to be wearing the mask. And may I add another funny part of what you said originally? Sure, yes. The left side of the church, you wear no masks. Uh The right side of the church, you have to wear a mask. Uh On the front part, where there is a mixture of elderly and young and so on, You have a choice. So I just got the biggest kick out of that. It's a mixed group up front. Matter of fact, it struck me so funny that I did ask the authorities, is there a no smoking section? (laughs) You know, we had all these different sections. Does this flight come with a sandwich? (laughs) Is there a beverage service (laughs) once we're at 33,000 feet? Gosh, isn't it great to laugh again? Oh, it is. Isn't it great? Yeah, and just to be able to... Hug your own family and yeah. uh, that kind of thing. And do you notice that at church now where people are in... Yeah, we're able to say, let us extend a kind of peace to one another. Uh-huh. You're able to say that. We say it with some caution, please keep it to family only, that right. type of thing. And when I, I, I think when we do get back to the new normal, 2022, for example, I think we'll still have hand sanitizers. I think we will still be fist bumping and think that we're going to come away with this with a new understanding of how quickly diseases like the coronavirus will in fact spread and take lives. But you know what the difference is? What used to cost $10 a bottle for a sanitizer, (laughs) they're giving them away because... (laughs) They're everywhere. (laughs) They're everywhere. And so I saw even in the drugstore, you get 10 bottles for $10. So it's like (laughs) there used to be $10 for one bottle. (laughs) (laughs) And I actually saw a display at the end of the aisle of Charmin toilet paper. (laughs) You know, buy one, get one free. It's like, okie dokie, life is indeed back to normal. And with that, how about a prayer, Father Joe Grimaldi? Sure. I I just want to mention the last few weeks we've celebrated the Ascension, Yeah, you know, right after the resurrection. And so the Lord is no longer walking the earth that we walk on. However, he's now able to be everywhere. 
And so there's a famous saint, famous because she's popular among the faithful, and that's St. Teresa of Avila. And there are two St. Teresas. I call them the little one and the big one, okay? The little one is the little flower. Uh, but you have St. Teresa of Avila of Spain, and uh, she had a very spiritual, um, how should, intimate relationship with the Lord. And so she wrote this, that now that the Lord is gone. Christ has no body but yours. You are the feet with which he walks to do good. You are the hands with which he blesses all the world. You are the hands, yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes, yours are his body. Christ has no body but yours. This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.